The Third Mystery The Birth of Jesus The Gift of the Holy Spirit Piety Our Beatitude for the Day Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the Kingdom of Heaven. From Galatians 4 verse 4 But when the time had fully come, God sent forth His Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. From Luke 2, verses 1, 3-7 In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. And all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. From Luke 2, 13-16 And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. Let us meditate. After a long and arduous journey from Nazareth, Mary astride a donkey and heavy with child, with Joseph weary from days of walking, they arrive in his hometown of Bethlehem to find there is no room for them in any inn. Joseph's heart is broken with sorrow, but they are content to welcome their holy infant in a cave used as an animal stable, with a lowly feeding trough for his crib. What they lack in comfort and dignity, they fill with deep love and piety, accepting all as God's holy will. Joseph kneels adoringly before the Madonna and child, who are now his sacred family, the Son of the Most High God, and the Virgin Mother full of grace. He is awed by the wonder of it all, that God would choose him, a humble carpenter, to be the earthly father of his divine son. Mary and Joseph are in a state of sweet ecstasy as they adore the infant Jesus, his infinite glory hidden secretly in their hearts. The fullness of time has at last arrived for the fulfillment of the prophecy foretold in every generation, the coming of the Messiah, born of a virgin betrothed to a descendant of King David. God keeps his promise of a Savior. The promise given to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, to Abraham at Mount Moriah, to Moses in his last days, and to many prophets of Israel. Yet this King of Kings arrives without the pomp and pageantry befitting royalty, his sovereignty is cloaked with humility, his power with loving piety, he reigns with the spirit of poverty, and his might is love and peace. The birth of this King, long foretold, was awaited with great anticipation, yet his angelic heralds bypass the castles and palaces of emperors and kings, hastening instead to lowly shepherds who keep watch in their fields. Under a sky lit by a magnificent star, they announce the Saviour's birth in a stable, while choirs of heaven descend to earth to adore their God. The shepherds come in procession into the lowly cave, to pray and adore their Saviour, angelic hosts surrounding them, singing sweet anthems in the silent night. Then the shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as had been told them. After the shepherds arrived the Magi who, guided by the Christmas star, come to adore and pay homage to their king on his throne of straw. They present their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. So overwhelmed is Joseph that with Mary, they keep all these things in their hearts. Truly they are poor in spirit, yet possessing nothing, they possesses everything, they possess the Son of God. Blessed indeed are all who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the glory of heaven. They put all their trust in God, depending on Him completely. The Holy Spirit fills them with piety, a generous childlike love, enabling them to love God like little children who treasure their earthly fathers. How truly blessed are the poor in spirit, who receive the good news with rejoicing the poor and the lowly of heart, the shepherds of every generation. They are first in God's new kingdom, founded not on wealth and power,
but instead on mercy and justice, giving hope to all mankind. For the spirit of piety and poverty bring forth a new human order, born not of strife and conquest, but of very love of God. Now the leper, the destitute, the forsaken, and all who know they are nothing, become everything with the riches bestowed on them by the lowly Messiah King. To Joseph, the humble carpenter, God gives unprecedented authority to raise His only begotten Son, to teach, guide, protect and provide for Him as His earthly Father. Joseph's poverty of spirit, the fruit of his humility and piety, is marked by his total abandonment to the divine will of his Master. He completely relies on God's providence to fulfill the mission entrusted to him, and God floods his good servant's nothingness with all the spiritual riches he needs. The Trinity in heaven is a family, three persons in one God, and the Trinity on earth is a family, three persons, one of them God. But it is Joseph's authority and example as the head of the earthly Trinity that the Son of God must submit to and follow, teaching us to do the same. Jesus is the greatest example of humility and being poor in spirit, for although he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, by his poverty, might become rich. Immediately after the miracle of the Son in Fatima on October 13, 1917, the Holy Family appears, with Joseph holding the child Jesus. Father and Son bless the world from the heavens, where Joseph occupies a great place of honor, retaining the highest reverence after Mary as earthly father of the Savior God. As the great doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, wrote, Saints give us help in some necessities, but only Joseph gives us help in them all. As Jesus was subject to Him on earth, He still does what Joseph asks in heaven. Let us pray. Dear blessed Joseph, pious and poor, yet so rich in love and fidelity, open my heart to receive the gift of piety, the most precious gift of intimacy with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lend me your pious heart that I may be one with you, united with the hearts of Jesus and Mary. Grant that you, my Father, will transfuse into my heart your pious love, that I may be rich in piety and poor in spirit to enter the kingdom of God. To conclude today's reflection, let us pray thee our Father, ten Hail Marys and the Glory Be, and end with. Father Joseph, we entrust our souls to you.